Okay, y'all, today we're going to shoot videos on uh, famous recipes. This is going to be mom's uh, chicken, rice, broccoli casserole. And you put plenty of uh, cheddar cheese in it, sour creams, and onions, and broccoli, and rice, and, and chicken, and, and whatnot. And then uh, you bake it till it becomes rock solid hard, and then you can cut it out like uh, Christmas dressing. But it is mm mm good, let me tell you. I ate that whole thing last time, didn't I? <laughs> you remember what happened after that? <laughs> Hey y'all, uh, we're down here in the basement, me and Sarge, and uh, I was doing a little studying today. Uh, actually, in the last two days, I've actually uh, read this 80% low-profile gas furnace manual and uh, get ready to get started on this uh, quiet, super quiet, 80% uh, single-stage gas furnace. I actually put that furnace in for my buddy Charlie, and I got online and I pulled up the uh, schematic for his particular furnace. It was a GPN model. And I matched it up with the schematics in here and they ma matched perfectly. But uh, one of my buddies was asking me about uh, uh, how much of this was like data and installation instructions. And it's pretty much that much right there. Uh, it goes over like combustion air stuff and all kinds of, you know, installation stuff. But right here it starts with the uh, service and troubleshooting. And I'd say that's pretty much a little more than half. Um, got some really great stuff in it I made my way through it today it's actually got like a bunch of these troubleshooting guides you know for different things and uh, I came in and I kind of highlighted relevant stuff like the the flame sensor and all that and you know how we went over in one of my videos uh, how we tested the flame sensor and it actually states it right here typical flame sense current is 2.0 to 4.0 DC microamps and uh, Got in here a little deeper and started looking at boards and stuff and on on a few of these furnaces uh, the ream rud uh, They got uh, two green LED lights both lights should be on during normal operation And it tells you there's a power light indicates the board has 24 volts to operate uh, The okay light should be on constantly as the board checks its cir circuitry if that light is out Control has internal problems and needs replacement. So that right there, bam, it tells you your board's bad. But uh, anyway, I highlighted that kind of stuff and uh, got in here and uh, uh, transformer stuff. Uh, here's some more guides, you know, step by step guides. Wicked, man. You know, just step by step. And I got in here and found some stuff on high limit controls, uh, heat assisted limit controls. Um, blower motors, how to test them, everything. Induced draft motors, how to test them. Different things on Molex plugs, whole nine yards. Uh, adjusting gas pressure, we did that, and it was pretty much just like my video. Um, what I was really wanting to look at uh, was uh, these hot surface igniters. I do most of. I used to be a uh, American Standard dealer, and I guess you know if a customer wants American Standard, I'll, I'll, you know whatever the customer wants, I'll put in for them. But I, I'm a Ream dealer now. And that's what you know. That's that's what I put in. That's what I like. But uh, on all the American standards I was putting in, every one of them had hot surface ignition. And I'm kind of new to the uh, direct spark ignition, which the Reams have in them now. And uh, they had all kinds of great stuff to read on it. Actually, how to how to troubleshoot them and, and all that good stuff. But uh, you know, it actually. Uh, you know, no longer is there a 30-second warm-up period with the with the hot surface igniter. A spark arcing between the igniter points directly lights the main burners. The igniter electrodes are fixed position. There is no need to adjust them in the field. And then it goes on to tell you how to test it. And what you basically do to test that igniter is uh, the direct spark igniter is you uh, cut you like a two-foot piece of uh, thermostat wire and you take off about a half inch of insulation on each side and you mount one side to the furnace you know you take it to uh to ground you know you mount it underneath the screw or whatnot and you take that other piece of wire on the other side where you have the insulation peeled back and you take it over to your ifc ignition transformer and you hold that dude about an eighth inch away from it and then what you should get is a spark you'll get an arc coming off of it and i figured they'd have a picture of that thing uh here's one and uh, there it is right there and basically you're going to see an arc coming out of this and uh, I, I advise you to be using some uh, some heavily insulated pliers or whatnot because that thing will flat ass kick your butt but uh, anyway I uh, really got into her today and uh, but I figured today uh, 
I might shoot some, uh, I dug up some igniters out of the truck, and I figured we might do like a resistance test on them. I've got a 76A-372, a 76A-370, they're uh, both White Rogers, uh, hot surface igniters, and I've got this, I, I reckon she's a universal brand, it's a FCO35KJ, it's a, one of those spiral spiral igniters and uh, figure we might uh, do some uh, you know we'll ohm them out we'll test them see what kind of resistance we get or whatnot but uh, I was always taught you know maybe some of the fellers can clue me in I was always taught that uh, on a good igniter you'd be reading maybe from 40 to 90 ohms and anything over 90 ohms is saying that uh, she's weak or she's getting ready to go out or she she, she may already be out but uh, I've noticed when I got in here reading about hot surface igniters in the in the Ream Rud line, they have a particular uh, igniters that they use, and one of them's called a Norton 201, and it has these black leads on it, and it says it could ohm from 75 to 180 ohms. And the second one is called a Starlight, and it has orange leads on it, and it says it could be anywhere from 20 to 300 ohms. Um, why don't we get after and uh, we'll do a little resistance tests and maybe some of the brothers can fill me in on this. But uh, before I get much into it, man, I'm, I'm hoping that my brothers Jason, uh, you know, T-Stat Tech, and, uh, and my other brother Nick, man, NLB, man, uh, I hope y'all are safe. I hope y'all have power. I hope y'all are staying warm, man. Uh, I'm thinking about y'all. All right, y'all, let me get after it. Okay, y'all, we're going to start out with this uh, 767A-372 White Rogers Igniter, 120 volt, uh, 5 amp, okay? Uh, I've got my uh, field piece fired up. I've got my probes stuck in the bottom here. Uh, I tried not to job them in there too, too hard. I didn't want to ruin my new igniter here. But uh, like I said, I was always told 40 to 90, and we're looking at uh, 62.8 on this one. Uh, we've got it set to ohms right there. So we're looking at 62.8, 62.8. All right, let's try this next one. Hey y'all, uh, we've now we switched over to the 767A370 from White Rogers. Uh, it's a, a hot surface igniter. It's uh, rated at 120 volts and five amps also. Looks like the only difference really is uh, the ceramic here and the Molex. Uh, the Molex has got male ends on it where I was able to uh, take my alligator clips and clip on it. Uh, the other one, the 767A372 had the female Molex on it. But uh, we're reading uh, 67.6 on this one. 67.6 uh, ohms. Okay, uh, let's try that other one, the no-namer I got over here. <laughs> Okay, y'all, we're going to take a peek at the uh, FC035KJ. Uh, it's a universal spiral coil uh, hot surface igniter. Um, I popped up online and I found her. Uh, pretty much says she's universal. Uh, came with uh, different Molex plugs and all, and you just pop them in on that doodah right there. But uh, says she does, uh, it's a round IG series spiral type and uh, it's an OEM replacement for Nordine. Uh, also does York, does like three or four different Yorks and Claire with round filament igniter only. And all Heil, Tempstar, Arco Air, Comfort Maker, Snyder General, ICP models, providing they already have the round filament. Um, I've got her hooked up and we're ready to ohm her out, man. Let's uh, pop her here on the on ohms. Um, she's reading awful high. Uh, you know, we got uh, 60 on our uh, White Rogers uh, igniters here. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, like I said, I was always told, you know, 40 to uh, 40 to 90 and anything over 90, uh, uh, that was a sign of them being bad. Uh, maybe my brothers can clue me in on this. Uh, I, I'm just thinking it's because we have more filament here and it's causing more resistance. Uh, not sure, but uh, any input from the fellers would be greatly appreciated. Um, I reckon thanks for watching, y'all. Uh, we'll holler at you soon. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. It's time for Frisky to get the feed bag on. Later, y'all.